Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Casino Heist guide. In this guide, I'll be doing a little bit of an updated version of the guide I've uploaded last year, since it's a little bit outdated because both the heist and the strategies have changed. So without further ado, let's get this started. First up, location. The La Mesa Arcade is going to be your best friend. It's the cheapest and it's also the closest to your casino. Very convenient. If you need some help with getting started on the heist itself and how to get started with all that stuff, there's an eye in the top right of your screen that will get you to a video for that. Secondly, you will want to do the Casino Heist Jammer collectibles in order to unlock Avi Swordsman. It shouldn't take more than an hour or two and you will immediately have the best hacker available. Also, make sure to scope out the casino completely so you won't have to do that mission ever again. And you can then just go ahead and just simply only check the vault continents and then move on to the heist. And if you need help with the signal jammer collectibles as well as scoping out the casino, again there's an eye in the top right of your screen for a video for both of these. And yes, you can do everything in an invite only session and do it solo. The only time you really need to have someone else is in the finale, which in my opinion, you should always do with two players since it makes you the most money, no matter what loot you have or how much you took with you. There's a total of four different types of loot you can get from the vault contents mission. Cash, gold, art, and diamonds. Diamonds are tied to event weeks and they happen every few months. Cash is arguably the worst thing you can get, so even during regular weeks, just don't bother with them. There is a very easy way though to avoid getting cash. In the example I'm about to show you, this was recorded during when the diamond event week was going on, so please don't get confused with that. The method does not change. First you do the heist and pay the 25,000. Then you proceed to do the scope out missions like normal and see what the loot is. If it's cash, like in my case, then you should call Lester and cancel the heist while you're still in the casino. Then you want to return back to your arcade and start up a new heist again, thus paying also the 25,000. When you do so, the game will automatically give you a new target. I happen to get lucky and I got diamonds. It's possible you will get the same target again and if that's the case, then you can just cancel the heist again and repeat the before mentioned steps. Another neat little trick to lose cops without calling Lester, because during most prep missions you can't call him, is by giving Simeon a call and then requesting a job before you start the prep mission. Now you don't have to continuously do this, you just simply need one job invite. When you have a wanted level, you can then launch the job he sends you or accept any job invite you have and then back out of the job immediately. When you've done so, you will lose your wanted level and you can just simply move on with the heist. You will have to pick up the heist prep object again though. Speaking of moving on, you can also stop Lester from rambling on about the mission by giving any of your contacts in your phone a call, like for example your assistant or Brucey. As long as the contact usually picks up their phone, you will be okay. This allows the mission objective to also be shown a lot quicker, thus saving you a bunch of time in the long run. Next up is the crew. For the big con, you don't need weapons, so picking Carl is fine. For vehicles, you can go with the cheapest option too and pick the Sentinel Classic as that's the best option to choose. And for the hacker, we'll be picking Avi. If you have art as loot and you know what you're doing when hacking, then you can also pick Christian and make about 3% more at the end of the heist. With the correct loot acquired and the crew set, it's time for the prep missions. On your screen, you can see an overview of the missions you should and shouldn't do. Patrol missions is also optional, especially when you've done the heist a few times already. However, the mission does take only about 5 minutes and it reveals the locations of the guards inside the casino, which can be very useful. So I'll leave it up to you if you find that worth it. For the security passes, make sure to select the right one. Pay attention to what I'm showing on screen for the correct image, as well as the confirmation screen asking you if you want to have the level 2 security passes. Because without these passes, you will make your life much more difficult than it should be. Moving on to the prep missions. The prep missions all have multiple variations. For unmarked weapons, there are six variations. Gankashi and Police Seizure are two very straightforward missions. Go here, take out a few dudes, take the weapons and lose the cops. Meriwether weapons, where you kill a couple of Meriwether guards, steal the schedule, and then take down a titan. Now for this one, I would be using an explosive sniper or any lock-on weapons or vehicles is definitely recommended.
military vehicles where you go to Fort St. Kudo, the steel barrage. For this one, I would make sure to use the trick to lose the wanted level that I mentioned before to get rid of the 4 star wanted level as soon as you leave Fort St. Kudo so you can drive back to the arcade much easier. Noose fence where you have to blow up the doors of four noose fence in order to find the weapons and then drive it back to the arcade. This one you can either use a sticky bomb or any other explosive on the back doors. And once you found the correct noose fan, you don't have to go after all the three others. And finally, smugglers. This one you can just fly or drive straight to the Tula floating in the water. Whether you take the jet skis that are parked for you or just throw your aircraft in the water, there's really no need to take out the smugglers. Just take the plane and fly the sunny shores. Also, make sure to use D-pad right or E on keyboard to go in hover mode and make landing a lot easier. For the getaway vehicles, there is a total of 7 variations, two of which are exclusive to Chester McCoy. And they're all pretty straightforward. Go here, take out a few dudes, take the car and leave. The airstrip one, however, can be a little bit annoying, so what you want to do is take out the drivers before they start their base. You can either use a sniper rifle from a distance or just use an assault rifle to take them out quickly so they don't drive away. If they happen to do drive away though, just wait until they finish the lap if you can't really reach them and you should be able to steal the cars after they exit the vehicles. For the hacking device you have to take out one or two agents, then get the security pass and then go to either the FIB building or the news HQ. If you have to go to the FIB building, then simply open your phone and find the suitcase with the Sightseer app in the bottom right of your phone. When you found the suitcase, then leave the building and lose the cops. If you're having a little bit of trouble with finding the suitcase, then make sure to check the toilets as well. I unfortunately speak from experience with that one. For the News HQ, you do the same thing as with the FIB building, but you can try to do this stealthy. But personally, I find it a waste of time, especially when you can lose the cops very easily. Make sure to go to the left and to the right to see if your signal increases and check smaller hallways with the servers as well, because the suitcase can be located there too. For the vault keys there are also two variations. Duggan's goons where you have to take out two security guards and take their vault key cards. For the drunk security guards you can melee him to avoid alerting the cops which would obviously be very favorable. If you have to steal the prison bus then don't bother because you can just head straight to the prison and then use lock on missiles from your aircraft to find it in which tower the guard is that you're looking for. There are multiple guards though, but they have heavy snipers, so make sure to stay on the move so you don't get hit by those heavy snipers because they will shoot you dead in one shot, which is never fun. Once you're taking them out, just simply go up the stairs in the right tower and just leave the area. For the entry disguises we'll be picking the group of sex outfits. The missions themselves are simple, but luckily you can also call Lester during these prep missions, so that will save you a bit of hassle and time. Make sure to do both part 1 and 2 though to avoid confusion. For the vault drills you really have to only go to a location and steal the vault drills in either an ongoing robbery or some failed bank robbers who already got caught. Not a very difficult mission. Now it's time for the finale. In general, it's not that difficult, but there's a couple of things that will speed up the process. First of all, we will not be using exit disguises because, well, you simply don't need them. Secondly, we will be triggering the cutscene to enter the casino from the biker club across the street like I'm showing on screen. It saves you a bit of time and it never fails to amuse me. Once you're on the inside, it's just business as usual. Make your way to the vault and start grabbing the loot. When you have to use the key cards to swipe the door and you can't use a microphone to talk to your teammate, then keep an eye on when he or she swipes the card. If you swipe your card at the moment your teammate does, you should be fine. 
In the example footage I'm showing, I'm stealing diamonds, which takes about 32 to 34 seconds. Gold takes 25 seconds, art takes 18 seconds, and cash takes 38 seconds. But just like Lester after he met Georgia, we pretend cash doesn't exist. Once you're in the vault, you want to start on the outside and then go for the doors that have multiple cards behind them. Once you've cleared those, you want to head to the middle section so you can grab the last bit of loot before the timer runs out. On gold, diamonds and cash, it's not possible to grab everything. In rare occasions, it is possible to grab all the gold as two players, but it requires quick hacking and a bit of luck that the cars are in the right locations. For art, you don't have to worry about it at all because that will always just be very much possible to do with two players. Hell, you'll probably even have some time left. In general, you should keep an eye on the timer and be mindful of how much time you need to clear a cart. If you need to make your way from the outside row to the exit, then give yourself until there are 15 seconds left. If you're in the middle, then leave at 10 seconds and you should be fine. It's better to leave a piece of loot than leave the casino with the alarm on. If you happen to fail and trigger the alarm, then you can simply stay in the vault and wait until the gas kills you to give it another try. You will miss out on the elite challenge though, but that's only $100,000, so that's not really the end of the world in my opinion. For hacking the door, I will show you all four variations you can get and the solutions for them. These will always have the same 8 options you can choose from, but they will be in a random order and the solution will always be the same. So try to memorize which 4 options go with which fingerprint. When you got the mother load, it's time to make your way out. Simply make your way to the stairs and go up. And if you want to go a little bit quicker on the stairs, then go on first person. When you're upstairs, make sure to keep an eye on your radar to see where the guard is located. And when he's in front of the door, quickly get out and give him a smack on the nose. When he's down, make your way around like I'm doing on screen and wait for the guard to be in front of the door again to take him out as well. It is possible that this door will be blocked off. If that's the case, then use this door instead and take out the guard in the same way. Moving on to the hallway, make sure to have this guard's back turned on you and then make your way to the locker room. Cut through there and then wait for the guard to turn around again. When he's done, you can make a dash for the exit. When you are outside of the casino, you can take out this cup so you won't get a wanted level right away and then follow the route I am taking. Pick up a pedestrian car or take your own getaway vehicle if it's across the street and then make your way to the helicopter as shown on screen. A quick tip I can give you is to aim your gun if you need to make small adjustments to your movements and don't want to risk falling off. Which also is very useful when you have to climb the three ledges. When you reach the helicopter, simply make your way to Blake County and lose the cops. The three drop-off locations are in the sawmill, underneath the big bridge near Avis Island and north of Pulido. So simply head towards Pulido and you should have lost the cops by the time you reach the sawmill. And that is all there is to it. All you need to do now is mute your audio so your ears don't bleed from hearing 100k on a coup for the 50th time and you can enjoy your brand new stack of cash. You know what doesn't make your ears bleed? Becoming a YouTube member like Sir Doom. Become a member today and feel your ears heal up as soon as you click the join button. It's true. With all that said, with all that done though, thank you also very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the fun and useful. Subscribe for more and I'll see you all later.